Hello, welcome to, uh, I guess like 10.30 on Friday night. I'm going to be vlogging book, Becca's Bookopoly um, as I would like to get a lot of books done this weekend. That's like a really big priority for me. And the biggest priority is to finish my TBR Clue. So I only have two books left for TBR Clue. And that's my fun TBR game I play. If you want to check it out, I will link it in the cards and down below. Anyways, the last two books that I have left to read are Flight Risk by Kara Putman. This one is a legal thriller, Christian suspense. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm 100 pages in. This needs to be done this weekend. And then I am also reading A Kin by Emma Donahue. I have like 130 pages left of that one for my, um, oh, I can't remember the rooms they're in, but a kin is for a prompt of three to 400 pages. And this one is a net galley book. So if I can finish those this weekend, I'm a happy woman. Um, <laughs> but that's, those are my general goals. So I'm starting with this one as this one has a dark cover and that's the first prompt. Then, um, I also did have plans to read The Road to Oz, but I've already read that this month because it was really fun and easy. I do, however, have the next one, which I could read. Um, I think The Emerald City of Oz, I think is the title. I don't know. It's number six in the Oz series. So that will be my fantasy that I'm going to try and pick up. However, I am needing to sleep. So I've been doing some reading. I am doing some sprints right now with Maddie and Steph. Um, it was pretty fun. Their first sentence challenge. Let me see if I can get this up for you. So there we go. Um, it's, it's a mess in here. Um, and honestly, I'm going to need to clean tomorrow while listening to an audiobook, probably. But here's the plan. I've been reading for a bit, and I want to know the, know the new roll drops as soon as possible. So I'm going to set my alarm for 5 a.m. to wake up and see the roll drops and then work some books in. I have like seven books that I'm in the middle of that I want to finish out eventually. So I have options where I don't have to like start brand new books. I hope. I also have something on hold in case disability rep shows up. So excited to try that one. I'm going to read it anyways, if not, but you'll see what that one is. If disability rep is rolled. <clears throat> Dry throat, apparently. Anyways, I'm going to turn off the light to try to get some sleep. Maybe read on my Kindle a bit before falling asleep if I can't. And then I'll wake up at six and you'll see this very tired face <laughs> in my pajama sweater. Um, finding out the roll drops. I am feeling tired, but I'm also having too much fun watching the live stream, so I don't know what I'm going to do, um, but I might listen to this one later, falling asleep. Anyways, here we go with uh, describing books. Let's see. Hopefully you guys okay. Hopefully the computer okay, but I will repeat them afterwards. So roll drop two board one. Roll number two. Seven. And that is a book with POC rep. Okay. So I just tried to exit in the thing then instead of on stream yard. <laughs> POC rep. So, prompt number one, POC rep. Mm. Find number two, which is always. <laughs> I love it. It's like the set of all. Next one. Um, I just shared the right screen. Okay, cool. 2021 board roll number two is seven. And a contemporary. contemporary. 
now you get to finally see my lovely hair and lovely face. Um, I need to think about those books because what I have left on my TBR for the month, I don't think they really work. So I'll need to think about it. Um, contemporary, I can do. POC rep, I don't think I have anything left on my TBR for the month. That works, but I have options. So we'll find something. I'll check in later when it's not 5 a.m. So um, I haven't been able to think sleep since I got the information. It's been about a half hour now. I think I'm going to be picking up, figure this out. I needed a middle grade or something easy to read since I don't have anything pre-started. Um, and I have Girls of Many Lands, this series. So this one's set in Turkey. This is Layla the Black Tulip by Aliv Latour Kritor. I don't, I'm going to butcher that name. It's 5.30 in the morning. Anyways, um, I'm going to be trying this one for my POC rep book. So there's that one, and a kin, and Oz, and <laughs> Flight Risk. That's all the priority before six, before, not six o'clock, five o'clock. I hope I can do it, um, but I still need more sleep. So I don't die. <laughs> I don't know how people are staying up all night. I congratulate them. Anyways, I figured out my book that was bugging me and now I'm going to go back to sleep for a couple hours and then try to just get through some stuff fast. Good morning. Um, it is 10 to 10 right now. Um, I slept in a little after not really sleeping after those roll drops, which maybe I shouldn't have woken up for, but I did. Anyways, um, so I have about three hours before I need to head out. I am going out for lunch with my parents. And until then, I want to finish two books. So I have three hours to do this, I think. So first priority will be Flight Risk. This is for my TPR Clue game, like I mentioned. And this is for the dark cover prompt. I have 200 pages left and I think it's very manageable. I read about 100 pages an hour, typically. Then. Um, I will be reading also today, but probably not before lunch. Um, this one here, well, not this whole one, but the Emerald City of Oz from this collection. This one is for fantasy and it's um, a middle grade Wizard of Oz series, which I'm trying to work my way through. Then I will be reading um, Akin by Emma Donahue, which I have on ebook for contemporary, which that's my other priority before lunch. And then I was thinking about it and I realized that I did say that this would be my POC rep, which I think is still a very valid one and I would like to read it. However, I also realized I have two library books out that fit really well, um, being Binti. So I have book two and book three and I probably will end up reading book two for this prompt since I have it out from the, from the library and I need to get a move on reading my library books because I'm really behind on that. So those are my four books for the four, first four prompts, if I can speak. And then I will hopefully be uh, ready to go into the next one. I do want to make this weekend a reading weekend, even if it's not all prompt based. So I will be trying to read Boy Crazy Stacy by Gail Gillian. This is a graphic novel from the ba Babysitter's Club series. Mind blank. Um, but I will be trying to read that one as I do have it out and it's really short, it's 160 pages and I was going to save it for disability rep in case there was that one because Stacy does have diabetes, but that didn't come up. So it's fine. Um, and I'll save it because, or I'm not going to save it because there's no way it's going to be rolled. But those are the other, those are the top things for today. Um, and then my other... <laughs> big thing, this is kind of like a, can I fit these books into prompts soon, um, is House of Sand and Fog by Andre Duma, Dubas III. This is for my book club and I need to get a move on it. So we'll try squeezing this one into any prompts as well. Um, so this looks crazy unachievable, plus it can, but remember that this one is only one of three in this bind up. Um, 
it's something like 200 pages, 250 pages, which is a bit long for an Oz story actually, but it'll be fine. It'll be easy. So yeah, that's it. Welcome to Saturday morning when I'm officially awake. So I have made some progress. It's 1115, um, which I should have made more progress to be honest, but I'm currently 160 pages into this, which means I have 150 pages to go. Not shabby. Um, and then I was working at some buddy reads while doing some stuff sprinting the whole time, but it's fun. So basically I'm doing well. They're still sprinting and talking and I'm hoping, I don't think I'm going to finish two books, but I am hoping because I always set myself goals, even if they're not achievable. I'm hoping to be finished flight risk at least before lunchtime. I think it's very reasonable to be done it by 1230, 1245. Um, and then hopefully I could maybe start an audiobook. So that's my plan. So same position, but I finished Flight Risk. So yay, dark cover completed. It's also a contemporary, so it kind of works for that. Um, but yes, Flight Risk is about a lawyer named Savannah and her, uh, she's going through some stuff at work because of her husband, her ex-husband. So she is 40 years old and her ex-husband has just been discovered from flying to and from Thailand for probably illegal activities. And so there's this reporter named Jet who is uncovering the story and Savannah who is the lawyer and there's stuff going on. Um, it's about vigilante justice and um, it's really interesting. Brass paste flew through it. I think I'm giving it four stars. I do need to write a review for NetGalley since this was my NetGalley prompt. And woohoo, we're done. One book. All right. I have an hour left until lunchtime. So I need to like ha get ready within a half hour and then we'll be fine. But yeah, starting an audiobook probably. I'm probably going to listen to The Admiral City of Oz as I have those on LibriVox and such an easy read. So we'll probably do that one next for fantasy. But I also want to get to a kin um, by the end of the day. So I am done for the morning. Um, I'm dressed. Yay. I'm also watching a uh, great Canadian baking show because it's an easy thing to pay attention to out of the side of your brain. I don't know if that made sense. Anyways, um, my hair got all dry. So I mean, naturally. So now I had to wet it a little so I can brush it, but I'm headed off to lunch and then we'll see. I didn't read any more in a kin, but I have about 20 minutes and I might get there early so I can just read while waiting. And then um, I'm happy that I finished a book today. That's like a real big deal because it's been really hard to read books lately. So I'm happy I read one book being Flight Risk. And now I feel like these, like I'm not loving a kin as much anymore. I feel like it's kind of slow, but I am wanting to push through. It's only 100 pages left, 130. And then I have um, Valette, which is making me not want to read <laughs> because I don't like that book so far. So um, yeah, I'll keep reading it though, listening to the audio when I'm forcing myself to. And then um, yeah, this afternoon hopefully will be a success. I tend to stay up late as opposed to go to bed early. So I have a feeling tonight I'm going to get a lot of reading done. But then again, I also want to wake up at 5 a.m. for the drop, but I'm not sure if I'll be alive at that point. So we'll see. Anyways, I'm going to head off to lunch. So it is uh, 3.30, 3.40. Uh, lunch was great. And then I went out and did some snack shopping since I didn't prepare that before the weekend. And then it rained and now my head wants to curl up and die. So uh, we're gonna curl up and hopefully read a book and hopefully that'll be helping the problem or helping the problem, helping the solution. Um, my brain's, like I said, wanting to die. Anyways, I got snacks. <laughs> um, so I want to show you a little snack haul. So I got this, which is like organic cauliflower bites. I want to try something a little more on the healthy side, 
but still gives me that sensation I want from eating snacks. Um, speaking of healthy, I got Pepsi to wake me up and keep me going because I'm going to need that, I think. I also got a bag of chips and let's see if I can grab it. Um, and a couple chocolate bars that were on sale. So I am set for snacks for the weekend, being tomorrow only. I'm sure I won't finish them all this weekend, but now I have snacks, now I can eat and just curl up with my book. Um, probably gonna be akin, but then again, my eyes are just so bad, I might just need to listen to an audiobook, and that might be Volette. Actually, let's push on Volette until I finish my Be Becca's Book Off League books because um, I would really like to prioritize those books this weekend. So we'll see. So it's four minutes, three minutes to five. So I'm waiting currently on Kevin's channel for the roll drops and I am reading Akin. Um, I have a hundred pages left according to the ebook. So I'm not sure how much that is, but I mean, it's a good book. It's about an older man named Noah who is about to turn 80 and on his the day before his 80th birthday something like that uh he's going on a trip to France to go back to his past essentially and he wants to discover what's going on back there he also wants to revisit his old home and all these things but just before he's about to go he gets a call that he is the last remaining relative of this 11 year old boy who will end up in the foster system due to the fact that his grandmother's passed away, his mom's in jail, and his dad has passed away, and his dad, so the boy's dad, is Noah's great nephew. No, Noah's nephew. So this boy, Michael, is his great nephew. And it's about these two who do not know each other at all, and who also don't know how to relate to each other at all, being in France together and learning how to relate. It's called Akin, and I think it's a really interesting story about family and just trying to connect. So 100 pages left. That's going to be my priority. I Now that I'm in the swing of it, I think it'll be good. I am eating my chips and just <laughs> relaxing on the couch. Um, but soon the roll drops will happen, and when it happens, I will film it. Okay, are you guys ready for the first roll drop? Let's see. Book up with Dumbledore, roll number three. Eight. And that is the first book in a series. Oh boy. Did that feel okay, firstly? I, I might have something for that. Okay, so the first role is the first book in a series. I really hope this really fits with everyone. I hope it's okay. It fits with mine. <laughs> That's yeah, rough for me, but I think I have something. <laughs> Alright, Gavin, <laughs> roll number two. Are you guys ready for the second role? Come on. I am ready for the second roll. I think. I'll just share the screen again. Uh, and then, yeah. The, so this is the second roll. 2021 board roll number three. Is a nine. And that is a chance card. And my chance card is... Oh, I don't have chance cards. Confessed by Colleen Hoover. Okay, so you guys don't have to read Confessed by Colleen Hoover. That's not what the chance card is. So, Becca, explain this to me. So, if you have um, your TBR and you have a set amount of books that you'd like to read, you have to pick the same amount of books for the books that you want to read and the books that you maybe don't want to read as much. You number them, you give them each a number, and then you can use a random number generator to pick which book you end up having to read. So, I mean, you guys, that is why we're not going to sprint until about half past, about 30 minutes past, just to let you guys have a chance to pick something. Um, but yeah, I mean, that sounds fun. It sounds like it could be anything. You could pick anything you want for it. Okay, those two roll drops are not <laughs> very helpful. However, um, the first one, let me see, I have this one here, which I have started already. It's To Dwell Among the Cedars, which is a biblical fiction and the start of a series. So that one works. I need to figure out my chance card options. So I found four options, two of which I am not super eager to read and two of which 
would be really quick and easy reads, I think, for the readathon. So that's kind of what I'm doing with. They're all small though, so I'm not ruining myself. Um, so the first one is one that I'd like to read, which is The Doctor's Perfect Match by Irene Hannon. This is a really short, love-inspired, contemporary romance novel. Like, I can finish that in an hour, maybe two. Another one is one that I'm not super interested in, which is The Turn of the Key by Henry James. I've heard not so great things about this, but it is really short. It is a classic that I do own and I'd like to get to eventually. And like I said, I can probably finish this one in an hour or so since it's like 95 pages. So that's one I don't want to read. <laughs> then I have Binti, which I did mention for POC rep. And if I don't get this one, um, I'll still read probably this one, but not for the prompt, obviously. So this one's Home. This is a sequel and I would really like to get to it. Then the last one is one that I don't have desperate need to read, but it's not gonna be a hard, awful hardship if I don't. And that is The Girls Still Got It, Taking a Boo Walk with Ruth and The God Who Rocked Her World by Liz Curtis Higgs. So this one isn't a very long biblical nonfiction. Um, so there's that. All right, we're gonna do a random number generator and the way I talked about them is the order in which they will be. So let's turn this camera around. Okay, let's generate. One, perfect. I'll be reading The Doctor's Perfect Match by Irene Hannon. So I've just filmed my TBR clue. You can check out my video to see what books I'm reading for April. Um, I don't know what I'm doing to myself because already it looks pretty chunky, but you can check out what books are there. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I finished two books so far today and I'm hoping to finish the third prompt, I hope. Uh, before sleeping. So we'll see <laughs> what I pick up. Um, and then I would like to finish two books ideally actually, but I'm only going to put one on my priority list and we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's so far the update. I'll be back in bed to discuss the books that I've been reading if I read anything more tonight. It's 10, 15 um, on Sunday morning. I'm not feeling well migraine wise, so I'm gonna take it easy. Um, I slept in, but I then re-recorded the wool drops. So here they are. Uh, so the prompts are contemporary setting or present day setting and outside of my normal genre. So I have plenty of options, which is good. I think I might read Boy Crazy Stacy. I have it on my uh, iPad from the library. I also finished two more books last night, so let's talk about them. I read, I'm not going to find the book right now, but The Doctor's Perfect Match by Irene Hannon. Um, it was really cute and really easy, but also, the, so this is my second Irene Hannon book, and both books have hit on some hard topics, but at the same time have been very authentic about it. Um, this one in particular is about a woman who, um, named Marcy, and she is struggling after school. She put herself through school, like, to get her master's in sociology or social work, and so she is struggling financially, and she is helping out her brother and sister-in-law for a week or two at their local Nantucket uh, business tea shop while they go on honeymoon. So that's kind of the start of it. And then she meets the doctor and she has a lot of things in her past and he has things in his past. But I felt like it was really well written and really authentic. And I really like Irene Hannon's way of weaving a story together, but also having in those tough topics. So really recommend her. I'm giving it four stars and I want to keep reading more from her. Then I read, um, I'm going to have to find the name. So I also read... Sully, I'm really hope I'm not butchering these names. Um, and it was by Lupeta Nyongo. Um, I basically went on my library app to discover what children's books or middle grade books I could read easily on my phone since I didn't want to have the light on and I couldn't sleep. Um, that were featuring people of color or had that kind of representation. And this one was beautiful. I know it's a picture book, but it counts. And it's about colorism, which I 
really appreciate this. Like, I want to buy it and bring it to work, even though my kids are probably too little at work since I work with under three-year-olds. But man, it was so, so interesting and so sad, but so heartwarming. And it's about how slowly she is um, a very, very dark-skinned black girl and how she feels so isolated because of that when her sister um, looks so much lighter and her mother, it says that her mother looks like the dawn, her father looks like dusk and she is as black as midnight and she hates it. But it's really about her, you know, finding herself. But then it also showed colorism in such a sad way. And I really loved how the authors note at the end said that like she was so much darker than her family and she felt so alone until she realized that there's beauty in it. Um, I just, I loved it. Five stars. Everyone should read that picture book. So um, I read that one last night when I couldn't fall asleep. So I am finished four books. I have four prompts left now. I have a fantasy, <laughs> which I still really want to read Wizard of Oz. So I'm really going to try to read that one. And then, um, so fantasy, current day setting, which I'm going to read Boy Crazy Stacy, which is a graphic novel and really easy. And then outside my normal genre, I think I might try picking up Binti for that as it's sci-fi. Um, if not, Boy Crazy Stacy would count as well, since I don't tend to read a ton of middle grade or coming of age stories, which I feel like this is all, all Baby Stars Club books fall under that kind of genre or that category. Um, and then the last one was the first book in a series, which I'm not sure I'll get to, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, four books down, even though one is a picture book, I'm happy. And I am going to relax, try to get my head under control, and maybe finish off some more books. It is 1.10 now. Um, and I would like to update you because I finished two books already, which is really good. So I sped read essentially through Boy Crazy Stacy, which is a graphic novel. Um, it was, it was fine. It was three stars. I think I love the writing, uh, art style, not the writing cause it's not really different in that regard, but the art style from the first author who I can't remember her name right now. But she, I think, I like her art style better. But this one, it was fine. <laughs> also, I never really liked this particular story in the um, Babysitter's Club arc. It just happens to be the next graphic novel. So I wasn't going to love it anyways. So I gave it three stars. Nice and easy read. It's set in a present day tense, even though some things were a little weird. Anyways, I also have finished Home, which is the second book in the Binti series by Nidhi Akafor. I flew through this one. It was um, <laughs> really good. I am not a science fiction person, so this one fits into the category of other. And I'm like, I want to pick up book three, but it doesn't fit into any of the other prompts. And to be honest, um, I probably should focus on finishing my other books first. But this one was really good. It does contain spoilers, though, for Binti, which is the first one. <laughs> Uh, but basically, Binti is about a futuristic world, about a girl who travels on a ship to go to university and things happen. It's a very short novella, the first one. This one was 160 pages, so a little bit longer, but not that much. And it just continues on with that story a year after the events of the first book. So um, I really want to pick up book three and know what happens. It is very weird for me to love a series this much. Now, seeing as we have three hours and four or five minutes left, I mean, I might push it a little because I did not start reading until like seven o'clock last night. However, I have here, let me see it. The Wizard of Oz. I have my big bind up, can switch hands. Um, my big bind up collection and it's about 220 pages. It is middle grade. It should be easy to fly through, hoping. I feel like the angle's really wrong with this. Anyways, I have my other book, because if that was my fantasy, then my other book is the first book in a series, which threw me for a loop, because I do not want to start series, but I have one in the works. 
So I am 130 pages into To Dwell Among the Cedars by Connellyn Cazette. I'm hoping I can finish this one in time. Um, I remember it being really fast paced and easy to read, but my migraines got in the way so I didn't get to it. So can I do it in three hours, four hours? I'm going to try. <laughs> Wish me luck. And I'll be done eight books. So it is now 1.50. The first sprint has been done on Becca's channel for this live stream. So I managed to get 100 pages into um, the Emerald City of Oz, which is really good. I'm very glad. And then I, while reading a little bit, but mostly because I needed food, I made like three layer grilled cheese with meat because I've been craving it. So I'm going to have that and finish off the Emerald City of Oz. I think I have 160 pages left. Um, and then I don't know if I'm going to get to dwell among the cedars, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Uh, and at the very worst, I finish later. But I did well for the first 50 minutes and now I have food and I'm ready to jump back in. I know this is not great lighting, but I'm going to wrap up here. I finished eight books. It's 3.30 and I can't handle any more reading in my brain, but I have read a total of 1,660 pages, 65 pages, which is a really good total for reading over one weekend. Um, most of the books I started this weekend and I had maybe 300 pages of that read previously. So it's probably like 1,300 pages. It's good. Anyways, so I'm gonna tell you the books I read and what prompt they were for. I've already talked about them all in this video, so if you wanna go back and find the specific, the specific book, um, go check it out. But I read Flight Risk by Kara Putman for a dark cover. Then I read uh, The Wizard of Oz, which, not The Wizard of Oz, but The Emerald City of Oz by L. Frank Baum for a fantasy. I also read Akin by Emma Donahue for a contemporary. And then I read Sui, and I don't want to butcher the author's name, so I will learn it for my wrap up. But I read this one by, um, by four POC rep. Really great. Five stars. Um, yeah, let's see. Flight's Risk was four stars. Emma Donahue's uh, Akin was three stars. And Emerald City was three stars. I haven't actually talked to this one yet. Let's talk about it now. This one is book six in the series and it was good, but at the same time, it just was like, there's a lot of ideas in this. You're basically just touring Oz for the whole thing. And not only Oz, but like the neighboring countries that don't like Oz and are their enemies. And so that's kind of the entire gist of the book. And it just felt like a lot of traveling and I didn't really understand why we needed to. It still had lovely charm, and I love how it has little life lessons sprinkled throughout it, little quotes, but um, just a three star for me. The rest of the series has been pretty steadily a four star, so I do really enjoy the series still, and I can't wait to read book seven eventually. I don't think I'm going to read it this month, though, as that's my second Oz book so far this month. Next were the prompts of, oh, what were they? First in a series, and was it first in a series? I gotta think. So it was first in a series, which I read the first book in the Einstein Anderson book series um, by Seymour Simon. I read one of them before this month and I enjoyed it. It was really fast, easy reads. So I listened to another one of the audiobooks, which was book number one in the series. They're just really short vignette mysteries that all are about science, which really easy, really fun great middle grade to go back and listen to. I never read them as a kid, so it's fun to discover them now. Next was the chance card of which I got The Doctor's Perfect Match by Irene Hannon. And this one I gave four stars. I think I gave Einstein uh, four stars as well. Keep forgetting to give you the rating. The next was out of like uh, other. So it was an other genre. And so I went with sci-fi for Binti's second book, Home, um, by Nidhi Akafor, which I don't want to spoil the series, but you should read these five stars. And then the last one that I read was for 
current day setting <laughs> set in the present. And I read Boy Crazy Stacy by Gail Gillian. This one I gave three stars to. So four, eight different books. I think it was a total of five, four middle grade, four middle grade, four adult, um, but lots of fun. And honestly, I got to read a lot of books from middle grade March, which I wanted to do more reading for. And then I also finished a couple book club books, a couple TBR books for my TBR clue game. It all worked out. So overall, I'm really happy with how this readathon went. It pushed me to read a lot of books this weekend and my head might not be thanking me for it, but uh, I'm glad I was able to get some more reading in. I hope you all did well with your reading this weekend. Please let me know down in the comments if you read books for Bookopolathon and how many did you finish or how many pages you read, what was your best book, anything in that realm down in the comments. But also if you would love to put like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you'd like to for more content. My TBR Clue game will be up in my next video so you can check out what I plan to read in April then. I hope to see you all in that video or in any other future videos. Bye for now.